Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, welcome back to another podcast about um, dicks and poop and boners and diapers. Um, hot topics this week, of course. Diapers? Uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're I, I mean, I, I haven't had to do that in over a decade, I guess, so I'm, I'm kind of out of the diaper scene. I, I'm, Man, not, I'm not sure you. of the developments and the new tech. I'm, I'm yeah. way out of the. Out Did of they the... have pull-ons when you were uh, when you were? We didn't your... have nappies back then. We just right. had to scoop it up with our fucking hands. In uh, holy shit, as an old as school a tech reference, bro. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a tech, as a, I've got a creepy um, S and M basement with some nappies in. You know, I've got my <laughs> nice, um, nice. Oh my god, nice. Know, I've got all that stuff. So thank you for that's sharing. My... Well, I don't like to talk about it. You know, it's no. private. It's private. Um, yeah, that was yeah, always yeah. a thing on. Uh, do you guys remember Euro Trash? We talked about it before. <laughs> Do I? With uh... I, t- I mention it like every day. I love <laughs> I loved Euro Trash. Yeah. It was such a good show. It was the pre pre internet meme. We liked Euro Trash for the wrong reasons, right? Yeah, well, for different reasons. Yeah. We were talking about uh, what, what was her name? Lola Lola Ferrari or yeah, whatever. Yeah, with name the was. big boobies. She died because of complications big, to her, her big complications boobies. of big boobies. But That's dedication. It's to weird that. because <laughs> I mean, I, I respect was, that. I was talking about her the other day, and then I was watching Glastonbury over the weekend on TV. I didn't go. Oh, I, yes. I just watched a bit of it on TV, and Blondie came on, and I thought, oh my god, she looks just like uh, Lola Ferrari, but uh, <laughs> without massive, uh, massive boobs. <laughs> Wow, I thought there was going to be some sign or something that, or someone cosplaying like Rip Lola Ferrari. No, the only reason I watched it was because there was a chance of boobs. Mm. You know? Yeah, that's well, one of the acts. I can't remember. Hold on a sec. I'll find out. One second. What was the What was that act that you said at Glasgow where she got about Christine and the and the Queen? Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Christine, Christine and the Queens. All oh, right. All she right. she got a got him out. She had some some bandages or pasties as they call them over her nipples. Right. Okay, yeah. She was yeah, just yeah. topless the entire the entire time. Well, Go- Google it <clears throat> if you dare. It doesn't count if they've got like the pasties. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I not- want to see some bare bare boobs. You know what is okay? Let's talk about this for a second, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> uh, <laughs> before too much. It is summer, obviously, yeah. and yeah. I've been like it really is talking around the harbour and around Bristol, like trying to get trying to get some exercise. Okay, yeah. Um, and I notice a lot of people, some joggers, some just walking. Obviously, a lot of men with no tops on, which is obviously problem one. But that's we've talked about that before. But how do you feel about the obvious lack of a bra when, when either wonderful. one is it's needed, wonderful. fantastic, or more when it's like more. But it's like <laughs> there's got to be something holding them in, though. I, I don't leave my house often enough to uh, know what you're talking about. But uh, um, so the, first of all, it, sports bras are a thing for a reason. Running with boobs is is a uh, yeah is is very painful. Yeah. Um, well, so I know you, now. I know now that I'm older. I know what that feels. You like. You feel it, yes, of yeah. course. Um, we we've obviously got double H cups. Um, at our age, but yes. it, it's like one of those things where uh, the bigger the boob, the more the more demanding. Uh, the bra, like you need to have a real. This is a serious piece of kit. You've like got a to get, carbon fiber it's reinforced ba- yeah. steel with the underwire yeah. and like really good last. I mean, first of all, it must be jolly uncomfortable to wear, especially in the heat. If you're this running in the heat, it's painful. The main reason. If you if you are a lady who has smaller boobs, you still you can wear a sports bra. It just holds everything in place uh, much more easily. But the big boobed ladies that jog, God bless them. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a trial. It's hard work because in order to stop them, just literally slamming up and down, you have to wear a bra that like smushes them to your chest right. which can't be comfortable in itself but no um i completely understand why you would want to not have to wear a bra that does that but equally i think the pain caused by this this jiggling would would outweigh the benefit of not having to wear a tight bra but hey okay. I, don't, I don't have giant boobs so it's hard to now say. that we've covered the scientific aspect of it uh lewis what what was what was your gripe it sounded like so a my gripe follow-up was coming. to that is how do you feel about the like thin or sometimes even like thick woolly jumper thing top that women wear with no bra oh. because you can like well because... it's just loose and you can tell that underneath there they're just no because there's flopping like flopping around n- because there's like nipple imprints do you know what I mean like bullets do you know what I mean like Oof. like like <sighs> I'm getting I just... all hot under the collar what <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I mean I just feel like that's um <sighs> It's it's it. Look, women can wear what they want, and I'm not 
taking the thing. I'm just saying, like, um, you know, I've I've noticed it a lot around Bristol, but I don't know if they're aware of it. Maybe that's the maybe they are, and maybe that's the thing. Wait, so, like, right, hold it's on. a complicated what, thing. I, no, I'm, most I still, women don't what are you talking about? The... They're wearing sweaters. Is the problem? I think sometimes you buy a top. I do this, do this too. I buy like a t-shirt, and I realize that I could see my nipples through it, like oh, all the shape of them through yeah. it. Oh, right? you're telling me you think women leave the house without knowing exactly what they're wearing? Come on, dude. Well, but it's not it, the house. It's like not not the right same temperatures outside. You know, there's like other factors that can be involved. Are we talking know? about sweat patches here or something? No, we're no, talking I'm about just, protruding about nipples. Nipple. It sounds like. Yeah, of course you know. On a follow up to your nipple related. <laughs> Topic. <laughs> I I don't. I, okay. I just I just want to write in about it. Why yeah, not? Let us know send about it, your send it in to... nipple incidents. Well, you're not going to have to read the emails, Chris. I will. True. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Write in then. <laughs> there must be some like. I know women have their favorite bra, right? And Do they? they? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and they like Old don't reliable. update bras very often um, because of the difficulty of like getting one which is right. You know. Right. Um. And so maybe that's a factor as well. Like, you know, just not when it gets really hot, you're like, oh, God, I haven't got anything I can wear. Right. Um, oh, I, I will also outside. say there's a lot of cl women's clothing that doesn't, it's, it's designed because fashion designers don't design clothing for the average person, do they? So if you look at most models, the, the, the accepted high fashion model will, will, will barely have any boobs at all. So yeah. a lot of the clothing will be, not designed for women with with boobs that's at the high end and then of course that filters down to what you see on the high street so a lot of clothing you try to put it on in a, in a in a fashion where it would fit you with big boobs in a bra and instead your bra is just showing which is why there's this whole strapless bra thing and those are a nightmare if you've got big boobs it believe me none none of this is easy it's a it's a daily struggle for, it's, uh, for honestly women. it's the same for me um uh, clothing -wise. <laughs> really yeah because the cup, I mean, the, the cup in the underpants <laughs> okay. it's never, so it's never I, big enough. I, none of the jeans in the Levi store fit me. Okay. Yeah. They just because it's they're for my, adults. It's it's because <laughs> I don't think people w really wear jeans anymore, though. Like everybody just wears track pants now, from what I can tell. Right. You might be right. <laughs> is this, but even those is this you really in your garage? Is the, no, the, no. Uh, like I see the, lo loads of kids and stuff wear track pants now i see them all the time yeah. they're wearing like baggy track pants and like uh big sweaters and stuff like it's like i used to uh, that's how i used to dress when i was like uh 10 years old i, th I think you're, you're right jeans like the basic blue jeans yeah you never it's, see it's them it's anymore. never gonna go i mean it, no it, it's like it comes and goes like yeah, i know they're yeah. some right now very but baggy I'm, jeans is the thing i've seen a lot of women wear at the moment very baggy almost look like sort of uh like big like 90s mum, style mum like, jeans yeah oh, the big old style. jeans yeah. would you um, say and then a tight top? i am a um an average sized man no or, not okay. really i'd put you on like a, this at the smaller side of Slight. a small man petite <laughs> whatever the male <laughs> version of petite is yeah sure. you're like you're slim and you're not like overly tall I well. would say, uh, like, the classic cuck. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Like, on the scale of, like, one to ten, yeah. with five being the average man, how tall, thin, skinny, like, am I? Right? Oh, Where you're, are you you're probably two well? average. You're, like, four, you're probably I guess. average. I mean, I don't know what the average height is in a man in this country. Is it five, eight? Let's have a look. Average, average male average man, height UK right? is uh, five, ten. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a couple of inches below average, right? I'm I'm five eight, five nine. Right. Good well, that's average in France. In France, it's five nine. Saint wow, you can, you, Saint this, this could be a uh, this could be a fresh start for you, Louis. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm, I'm maybe like forty percent the size. Oh uh, no, well, like you know, I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm I'm nearly the average man, but I'm I have like a twenty eight inch waist, right? A very right. skinny waist. Which means it, I can't buy like trousers. Right. right? I can't just buy it. Could... And also like even like um even like shirts, I'm buying the small shirts, right? Which is the smallest size mm. right. in most shops. Um and I understand like I just don't I just feel like it doesn't I I know a lot of people who are my size or smaller, um, you know, and so I, I don't think of my I've never thought of myself as like a below average No, you shouldn't size. Who gives a shit? No, but I've never in my whole life 
thought that I am smaller than average, right? Yeah. Right. But now that you're on dating sites and people are swiping, <laughs> you're like, holy crap. Uh, <laughs> must be six this, foot. This has to be the catalyst. Must be six foot. That's a complex that uh, I will address separately. But no, it's more that I actually bought some extra small shorts this week. How'd they fit? Like, right. Fuck's sake. They fit fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, that's starting to give me a complex. But are right? you are I'm you buying clothes that stuff. fit or you like cause I buy I buy clothes bigger than me. Like uh, you know, like I don't feel bad about the size I get because I, I'm buying stuff bigger on purpose. I'm not getting stuff to fit, you know what I mean? Like I don't have the um <sighs> I, I just, I can't do it. You want to if I buy stuff it. to fit, I will look really, really, really bad. So I just buy bigger stuff to hide the bad. You know what I mean? Uh, amen, brother. Yeah. I, I've started right. wearing I go, a lot I go, more baggy stuff. I go baggy. Like, I like loose, baggy shirts and stuff like that, because otherwise people will just see my man boobs, the contour of my man boobs. If I wear, like, tight-fitting shirts or whatever, you can't do it. I see. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Nobody wants to right. see that. Uh, okay. So I hide it. <laughs> this is another take. I hide it under all the, uh, under baggy, baggy, baggier clothing. But honestly, I've always had dr dressed like, uh, I've always worn baggier clothes. Like yeah, loose you've always clothes, dressed yeah. like Nirvana style, you know, emo kids. What? With, you know, with the... <laughs> with the <laughs> I mean, you always wear the big, the big, no, I don't know. I, I, I feel like... um. That's a different side of things that I didn't consider the shy side, like trying to hide your body type. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if either of you need it or are like that. Well, I don't know if I necessarily shape. need it, but I just, I mean, like I said, I've always dressed slightly baggy, so I kind of just stick to that anyway. You know, like I'm not saying oh, yeah. I have any sense for fashion. I do not. Uh, but I just dressed the way that, you know, when I was younger, I, I used have. to wear a lot of, uh, I was very skinny. I, I used to weigh like 10 stone, which is like 140 pounds, just soaking wet. I was like very skinny and I, I but you're it, six foot tall. So but it took a long yeah, time it, to get you out notice of the it idea more when you're tall and skinny. Right. Right. But I, it took a long time for me to get out of the idea that I could still dress like that. <laughs> like now if sure. I wear tight stuff, it just look like a dad that squeezed into an old t-shirt. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's not, yeah. not a good vibe. No. Yeah. It's, 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 I, I guess I also wear because I was on holiday with uh, uh, Boba and she just was like, she, she just feels like she can't buy clothes from adult. It's always weird when you're like looking in the kids section of stores to like get your clothes. Right, you right. Know? Well, and that I... sometimes isn't actually a problem because they're cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like... it, it's also hard for taller people. Uh, to find clothes. Like like I said, everything's made for what they see as the median. So you just look at the bang average and you'll sell more. And then, like, for example, Lewis, try this. <clears throat> Go to TK Maxx and have a look around. You will find that most of the stuff that's left on the racks is either S, XS, or XL and XXL. Like, it's the bigger end of the scale is what's left. So you should honestly try going to somewhere like TK Maxx. You clean up. Because yeah. I go there and I'm like, fuck, I'd love that shirt. But they only have it in S, which yeah. is small. So you should get it. And then I, I what I do is I that. buy it. If it's only an S and that's the shirt I want, I buy it. Really? No. But oh, then, okay. uh, <laughs> um, but then you know, it doesn't fit. It's too, you send it to me. It's way too tight. So then, yeah, I just send it to Lewis. I, 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 this is this is one of those things though. People, so when I go to a shop, there's none none of the stuff that I want is available in S, and there's only the, the L and the XL. You know, like like for me, it's like well, why not the get other way M? around? I guess it's your own experience. Why right? not get M? Yeah, get some M. Get some just, M, M stuff. Just, just hangs upgrade. off me. Yeah, but that's just fine though. Me. You could get yeah, is get, get some matching good. M jeans, and then get some uh, nice nice big shoes to go with it, and <laughs> boom. <laughs> You are I've just a decided 1990s that I'm gonna, skater. The, I've just decided that I'm going to wear clothes that fit me now. Yeah, I don't know. Right. well done. Gosh, it's taken you that long. To come don't up do with it. This revolutionary don't, idea. Don't do it. Do you it. know what? New Year's resolution. I'm going to wear clothes that fit me. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It's a dream. dream I've always dream. worn clown shoes, and now I have worn normal shoes. <laughs> How's the dating going, by the way, Lulu? You promised yeah, we us need, you'd go we on need, dates. You promised us an update as well. Uh, I'm a bit like... Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. Have you been on a date? Yet. No, one day. Oh my God. Right. Okay. Are you swiping? Yeah. Okay. I'm, uh, Have you I'm exchanged like, not... messages with anyone? Even. Yes, but I'm a little bit like um, reticent to talk about it. Um, do most well, of the messages also... start with? Oh my God, are you actually Lewis? Do you get like a lot of that or not really? That hasn't happened. That yet. hasn't happened. Uh, thank God. But uh, it's only a matter of time, I'm sure. 
and um, I'll just <laughs> if that if that happens, I'll block them immediately. Oh my god! Why don't? Well, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to date people with preconceived ideas of how funny and interesting I am from this podcast. <laughs> Do you want to date somebody who will just start singing uh, "Diggy Diggy Hole" like right in the middle of a restaurant? And um, and sort of asking you to fill in the gaps and stuff too. In an ironic way, maybe. Right. Look, you know, you've got to be able to laugh at yourself. So yes. I'm not I'm not against that stuff. I think um I spoke about this last week. I just I haven't really I haven't really looked at it in the week actually because it made me a bit uncomfortable. But I'll I'll get back to it. Um I'm I've done very well this week. I've I've had like voice problems and I've I've booked myself in to see someone and I've been planning on going getting ready for going away so i've been like trying to get a lot of shit in order when are you going away bit, i don't know i have to like sitting down and like talking to people and trying to be interesting or make funny comments like i don't know like it's not it's not easy no um and i guess part of me doesn't really want to do it you know yeah i'm not because i'm not hungry for a, a partner or anything i'm not like i'm not like actually that i think it's thirsty is it. the term you're meant to use these i'm not that thirsty right you're it not, means that i'm you're not, not on there so you're like, not thirsting for um for for I need to find for like half Kirsten. an hour just to like Thurston just to, like, for some Kirsten, whoever she is. Yeah, Thurston uh, for Kirsten. Change that. Go. Change that. Put that on your your app bio, whichever app you're using. Which app are you using? Thurston for some Kirsten, and see how many Kirstens come rolling in. Right. I'm trying to think. Well, well what women's name rhymes with hungry? Maybe quite there's specific. a woman called Mungry. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think Kirsten's like a super common name. Right. That's the sure point. You're narrowing is. it down. There Just you go. go yeah, you'll you'll get a you'll get a hit easier. Now. When you're trying to tune a radio, Lewis, do you tune it to just open all the bands at once? No, you narrowly tune it down. So just tailor it day by day to a different woman's name and a different way of saying that you're thirsty for that particular kind of name and see how many of that name come back. All right, let me just describe to you a thirsty couple of for ones. Right, I'll load the app. Yeah. All right, so the first one I've got here, <laughs> the first line of her bio is, the way to win me over is attention, smiley face. Okay? Right. Money. <laughs> attention, smiley face. There's a picture of her, her main picture is actually not a picture of her face, which is not really very common because one well, of the main guidelines is like the picture of your first picture should be of your face. It's her from behind. Hello. On some sort of balcony in a swimsuit, but it's quite far away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but it's a classic like her into looking into the sunset pose. And then the next line is a random fact I love is so basically you have these prompts right, right. And you have to fill them in and she's put so she's put uh, the first one the way to win me over is she's put one word in there attention right and it's not it's not really again what you're encouraged to do. Second thing so a random fact I love is that's another prompt she has put. A random fact I love is traveling. <laughs> right. <laughs> so she's misunderstood the prompt there and just, again, done it as lazy as possible. Um, that's okay, hilarious. So, that is, that's so, good. That's... So I scroll down and there's a picture of her from front. Looks like a nice normal lady. Looks a bit like a, look, looks like she's a bit like wearing like a top that's like a nun. It's like a full black top and she's got like hair, hair over her shoulders. She looks nice. And then... My simple pleasures is a third prompt. Right. She's put three emojis: a uh, sunshine emoji, umbrella on beach emoji, and a uh, cocktail emoji. That's her simple pleasures. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. So, like, okay. Imagine. <laughs> she great. Imagine you went on a date with her, and then she turned out to just be amazing. And then you guys hooked up, and you got married and stuff. Imagine you're older. And you're very happy together and stuff. And you look back and you bring this up. You say, remember your bio with the simple pleasures and you had three emojis and then you could laugh about it together, right? Right, right, right. No. And so, obviously, she's... Um, so, so I'm now supposed to pick one of these things that she sent, right? Right. And this is Hinge, by the way. And I'm supposed to press like heart on it and send like a message right. saying something about one of the to start like a conversation starter about one of her prompts, right? So would you guys like to have a go? Yes. Like, what would you yes. So you've got these three prompts and these two <clears throat> pictures. Yep. Yeah. Um give us give me your best. All right, give, your it, best give us the prompt. Give us the prompt. Okay, prompt. Well the prompt me. obviously was this is what you're working with. You're working with the way to win me over is attention. A random fact I love is right, right, traveling. Right, right, you got to slow down. I can't remember all of those things. All right, so the, the, the way to win me over is, is the first one. Yeah, yeah. Atten attention. And you can comment on... So you, oh, so we you got to comment pick, on hers. You've got to pick one of these five things that she's put on her profile. Okay. The two pictures or the three facts, the emojis, the attention or the traveling, and you have to send a message which will make her 
Just send something pick, back. So pick the emoji one and just okay. send the aubergine and the splashing one. That's, right. that's the way to win you over. Just just copy paste that into every single one. And Classy, maybe you'll, do you think you'll get a hit. Do you think she'll get that? Yes. Um, I don't know if people okay. will go for that. I think no, when people see might. that... There's probably like a uh, like an FBI warning, you know, like the tsunami <laughs> warning thing. When somebody puts that, I'm just an saying, alarm goes off somewhere. I'm, my first thought is, how can we game the system here? And I'm just thinking, volume. well, Lewis is already trying to game the system. I think we can just be honest okay. because we're not. Okay, for you know what start, I mean? it'll volume, be helpful for him. Okay, well, okay. First start that aubergine um, squirt emoji idea. Very funny, right? But it's, again, it's it's again against the recommendations of like these the, these things. Like Hinge will say to you, um, do do like like the Queen do an open ended question because the Queen's classic thing was, and what do you do, mm -hmm, right? Yes. Because that then gets someone to talk about something they know. Oh, I I work here in the in the palace. I'm a I, I polish all the sh the statues. I'm your right? husband. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 hilarious! <laughs> right, and so oh, if fuck. you just said, if the queen just said aubergine squirt emoji to someone, <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't know how to reply to that, right? And they'd say because at once, your Majesty, and go, go yeah, they'd have to, in. Yeah. I mean, they'd that have leads to. that leaves like the creative thought in their court. Right, you don't want to like. For, the problem was we, you just mentioned volume. Like, I'm looking through these profiles. I see someone I like. I go through that whole thing that Sips thought right in my head because you can't help it. You know, what if we grow old together? You know, what? Oh, won't well, we laugh about these profile things? I'll get all these stupid comments in my mind, like all these jokes about her looking like a nun that are not appropriate for me to send. Right, mm. and then I'll fucking I think, oh my god, you know, I have all these thoughts in my mind, and then I'll have to then come up with something funny from working with basically nothing or i guess i can just go with one of these standard chat up lines that people use copy paste over and over again right which i don't feel like i really want to do particularly and then finally i either send that off or i just exit onto the next one but that's taken me like what's like a, three what's minutes like the most standard one right hey baby is your fridge running because you better go catch it or something like that. Like, what's the uh, what's like the standard one? I don't actually know any. Um, but I assume you can look them up. Right. Like, um, there's probably there's probably loads. Like, I know um, I can look them up, but I'm asking you because I didn't want to really look them up. Well, no one's sending them to me because I'm a man. Oh, right. right. I don't get sent pickup lines. Well, mm. women don't um, use them except by other men. Um, My, are men, actually... men are more likely to use pickup lines than women are. Well, we, if, well, it depends. You know, Were you about to ask me how many women have you tried to to pick up before? Because the answer is uh, <laughs> no, one. It wasn't. <laughs> it's just the one. One and it worked. One and uh, and it. You that pickup line you use must be a gem. Oh so yeah, you should share that. No, I well, I don't. I, I don't want a magician never shares his secrets. You know, I I don't want you to know how to do it. So do I can one? never share. Yeah. So. Next one, she looks. Her first picture is of her looking like like fine, like it's fine, a nice like fine, or it's, or it's, just she looks. She's fine. She's obviously like she looks fine. She's okay, but she there's like a discrepancy already because she looks forty. Right. Well, <laughs> that's picture. not. Well, I mean, but, come on. But her profile says thirty. Now, obviously, that might mean she's a smoker, or she's just been in the sun a lot, or it's just a bad angle, right? Um. But it's like, it's enough to throw me off, mm. right? Right, so she's got like that sort of leathery look of a seasoned smoker, <laughs> is what you mean. Yes, yes. She's got, now, I don't mean... She looks like, uh, she looks like a, a bit <clears throat> too tanned. Um, yeah. Because of yeah. smoking and maybe the sun as well at the same time. Yeah, and I don't know whether it's like necessarily, uh, like, I don't think it's a catfish or anything. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I haven't. What does that mean? Uh, uh, like a, a catfish like, is when you like post a, a picture that's not you. Yeah. In order to, I don't know why it's called a catfish. I'm sure someone can explain. But to lure you in, a lot of catfishes are not even women, or that's not even a picture of them. Right. It's just some lad fucking about. So. Oh, you know. I see. I see. There's this. The, okay. So then there's a. Oh, I don't even know where to. 
Let's just move on to the next one. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would I would hate someone to, to, to be doing this to my profile. Yeah, but it's well, funny. the thing is though, is that it's all it's all out there for everybody to see anyway. We're not really we're not yeah. we're not like not trashing ashamed. these people or anything. We're just we're 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 analyzing the entire uh, the entire thing, right? They like, might even appreciate the analysis. They might they, be like, "You're right. They I might. can change that." Yeah, get they more might. Hits. Yeah. Um. Right. So, God, these are all so they're so standard. Very okay. mid. Can, can you Very see mid. how many people have like followed up with these people and stuff? Like, are there stats or anything? No, it's not really. Can you like like, that? like you a got, profile? Like, can you see you who's got the most Steam achievements? Part- You've not got like an Uber rating. You haven't got like this woman has completed three thousand dates platinum member. No, you know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not like. Would you like to tip your yeah uh, your hinge date? Uh, no, it's it's nothing like that. Right. It's all very um, you don't get that much information unless people want to share it, right? right. So, so if people choose... wanted to share that information, could they? Could you could you like put in your profile to say I've been on several dates? <laughs> you could put. Yeah, would that be like? like a, would that be something that people might you know think is is good? Don't but, worry, but, I've but been on seven hundred kind of... dates. Again, it's kind of set up to not to to not make you make those kind of mistakes, right? Because there's no empty boxes, right? It's all prompt based, so it's like you know you've got this whole long list of prompts. You're like, oh, if we won the lottery, let's spend it on, and then you can write. Well, we three just met. I mean, I'm gonna keep down. it. I'm not gonna. Fucking, that's ridiculous. <laughs> could you we like, just so, met? Could you like theme your whole profile? Like, do a role play? Like, you could be like uh, a guy who's obsessed with lewds, for example. So like every, <laughs> Quite every yeah. So the every drugs, question the drugs is from like, the seventies. We just we're in won Wolf the lottery. What do we spend it on? <laughs> and Lude, just, a shitload of just tons of lewds. And uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the whole everything could le- lead back to this guy is just obsessed with quaaludes or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it, that might be fun. <laughs> yeah, no. You Make might find some scene. interesting people through that too, right? Somebody might be able to see through the. Uh, you know the RP and and and. Well, I mean, we've all, I have seen a few guys' profiles who've like told a story in their profile, right? right? So it's like them and then them finding like something or rescuing a cat and then I don't know, like turning into a cat. I don't know. Doing the, like, there's a whole like there's a little journey that take, like a comic strip mm, within their right. profile, which is always fun. But I've never seen it. Is it always or anyone? Fun? It's always a fun idea, right? Um, well, you have to do something to stand out, right? On this, yeah, because, that's why I'm thinking like the RP thing might be really fun, you know? Like, because it, because everyone is, I don't know how how you feel about this, but there's this big big bell curve of people who are unattainably hot and people who are really ugly. Send her uh, a picture actually, of your big bell curve. Mate. Almost everyone in a, a lot of people you meet and see. They're all in this middle ground. Like eighty percent mm. of people fall into the yeah, they're 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 attractive. So the enough, so people right? that are really really hot, well, or you know whatever. Um, they they are they they're really picky, I guess. Right? They are not just they they are swiping away everybody, and they maybe have the confidence that they are gonna find their perfect perfect match because they can they well like they can i said do this. they've got a different kind of problem they have to filter out everyone they, you know the, the, the people there's the people who who get no matches and have to hope for one and there's the people who get only matches and have to try and filter through who they actually want to go but out you don't with. you can't uh, see who is getting matches and and no matches though right like uh, no, that's not available not, so you're just really. assuming based on how they look or whatever that they yeah but I, i'm and these assumptions you know it might well be that they, if they have an interesting profile right in some way or if they're um because what if they're really or... hot and they went on like a date or two and then word word got out that they have just really bad breath where's that word gonna get out <laughs> i don't know like in the in the in the in other people's prompts, yeah, warning. Yeah, warning. Sh- Siobhan, by really, the way, terrible Siobhan has <laughs> fucking terrible breath. <laughs> she's got, Wait, if you could leave she's got warts all over profile. her ass and genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Skip her. Best, yeah, that's, I don't know how you would fit that in. Like, you know, let's make sure we're on the same page about. By the way, dating Siobhan is <laughs> poor Sh- but also Man, poor Siobhan. <laughs> Siobhan, if you're listening to this right now, sorry we had to tell everybody about your. It's all right. They're not going to have to spell a name. It's fine. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, it's Sy- Sioban. If you're in case you're uh, with an H, there's an H yeah, in there at the Seal, end. Seal, 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 Se
Uh, before we carry on, I would just like to um, draw your attention to the fact that going online without ExpressVPN is like changing while leaving your window wide open. Uh, you might not have anything to hide, but why give random creeps a chance to invade your privacy? Why does everyone need a VPN? In my own words. Well, <laughs> when I go online without a VPN, internet service providers, uh, in brackets so ISPs, ISPs, ISPs yeah. can see every single website you visit, and they can legally sell this information without your consent, exclamation mark, to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you with ads that you do yeah. not want to look at or read. Uh, why is it personally important for you to use ExpressVPN? Well, if you're uh, if 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 you've got um, one one ounce of common sense, you'd want to secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com. By visiting expressvpn.com. Yes. Is there a, a slash that we get some moolah? Well, wait for it. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> expressvpn.com <laughs> slash triforce t r i f o r c e today. Visit there today. And you get you get an extra three months free if you. You do will that. get an extra yeah. three months for free if you do that. You all. You gotta do is go to expressvpn.com slash triforce T R I F O R C E today. Do it. For your health. I genuinely do use ExpressVPN and uh, I use Me it every too. day. I'm online right now. In a world of things that cause anxiety, this is something which is reassuring. So I'm I'm a big fan. Expressvpn.com slash triforce, you get three months extra free. Love you. Thank you. On with the show. So here's here's someone. Yeah, so here's her prompt. Uh, if we won the lottery, yeah. let's spend it on. And here are the prompts: Crash. traveling, oh. or quit the job, or <laughs> investing. It sounds like a winner right there, Lewis. So you like it's all those her, things? Her three they are options. all so boring. You My would God. love to do um, all of those things, though, Lewis. That's the thing. You say that it's boring, but you know what are you going to put on yours, Lewis? If that, if you're prompted that we win now, the lottery, okay. and then so what? Do you think that's boring? This is on the. This is more interesting. I don't than think the it's boring. One. I think that's pretty average. I think most people would put those three things. What else are you going to put? So, best travel story. Um, this is Diana. First time I went to a desert, capital D, uh, spelled dessert. Right. Uh, it, it rained. Uh, crying monkey emoji face, shrugging emoji. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the thing is, like, you can't judge people on this stuff, right? Like, people's, uh, but I can. people's internet is, etiquette. It's, 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 uh, it's oh, my awful. God. Okay. Let's get your post history up into your fucking profile and see how many hits you get. It's Jesus. so fucking tedious. I hate, this is like doing the washing up to me, going through this, trawling through this crap. I hate doing it. Ugh. Uh, let's make sure we're on the same page about having an open mind for traveling to new places. What I mean, sure. Let's make sure we're on the same page about that. It's again the most generic <laughs> thing. <laughs> Come on, I think it's fine. So I think I think that, I think people put too much weight on some of this. Some of the like the little things, right? Like uh, I know plenty of people who are really nice. I, I like them a lot. But if you talk to them like on, you know, WhatsApp or something like that, they come across as pretty fucking bad. But you know, like not not like in what they're saying, just. You know, they just don't come from like a, like a, like a, they don't spend that much time on the internet. So when they're on there, they're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're using emojis like my mom would sort of thing. Mm. You know? But, but, but it's like, I, I, I feel like every profile, almost every profile is the same. It's like, uh, I want, I want someone who want, who is excited. I'm excited for traveling. Yeah. I'm excited for, um, some sort of exercise <laughs> and I have, uh, a dog. Or, right. you know, they're, they're, but there's nothing, but the, even that like third one, the dog thing, mm. that's sometimes people's personality, but rarely do they have a hobby, even like of any description. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. First picture of her is, is with a dog. Yeah. Uh, she's her, her, the way to win me over is to make me laugh. Right. Cool. I mean, we can do that. On my bucket list, seeing orcas traveling to New Zealand, staying in an igloo in Finland, Ugh. Nashville, Swipe and left. skydiving. What, all left. on the same trip? No, that's on her bucket list. Oh. Left. And then, left. In, in, this is an interesting one. I thought one. that was like a really specific vacation that she was describing. <laughs> and I was getting stressed out thinking, how the fuck logistically yeah, this will this hard. work? Okay, this is a good one. My most irrational fear is E.T. Right. <laughs> I don't I don't want to hear that he's friendly, 
He's a wrinkly, dry, yet slimy creep vomit emoji. Oh my god. This is one of my dream woman. This is amazing. I, I feel the same way about E.T. Uh, fuck, fuck E.T., me. honestly. It, the, the, that movie just gives me a headache thinking about it. It's so gross. You know the part where they have the whole fucking, uh, you know, like the, the quarantine in the house? Yeah. Oh my god, I feel like puking every time I think about that whole scene. It's just the worst. Yeah, E.T. is going like all, all fucking uh, petrified and he's stuff. He's all action, oh, man. He looks shit. like a petrified dog turd when they yes, find him by the side of the yeah, road. Yeah, I hate that part. Yeah. <sighs> so they do have this Swipe like, that um, one, uh, Lewis. That one, she sounds great. <laughs> so of course the other problem with this, the other problem with this app is like it's very, um, and all of them these days, they're very monetized, right? right. More so than in the last 10 right, years right. than ever. Yeah. And as a result, like if you don't subscribe or pay or like have some sort of thing, I feel like it kind of because it, it's constantly saying sign you know, up to subscribe. premium subscribers get 11 times more matches. And it's like um, uh, boost your profile for 24 hours and get get 20, 20 seen by 20 times as many people. And it's like, you know. You could send send priority likes to mm. get right. So do do you think to the top of their profile? Do you think people would would do that? Would consider doing that? Well, I refuse to spend a single dollar on it, which is stupid. Maybe <laughs> I should, but um, maybe it's again that's just me being old and gr- grouchy and refusing to spend money on mobile games. But I I, I assume if you're good looking, you don't need to, right? <laughs> yeah, but you you are just assuming though. There's probably people out there. I mean. I don't know what the uptick is on people opting for that to pay to get a profile boost or whatever. But, you know, some people well, that, some people might be really like, fuck, I just need somebody. I, there, you there, know, there must be I'm some metrics, here. okay, in, in, the, in the back end that tracks who gets the most swipes and all this stuff. Because it's built into the app. There's this thing called standouts, which, again, I think it's on other apps too, like Hinge and stuff. And what you get is you get like this five people shown to you like daily mm. okay and you're not allowed to swipe on them you have to pay to swipe on them god damn right? but they're the they're the hottest okay, people but right. you said that when you started doing this a bunch of people at the office were also doing Look, it. it who knows who's on these apps right it, and it's private it's up to them and not this is not okay oh business. all right so anyway. say you're 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 going through all this and everything and uh and you finally find somebody that you you think you want to hook up with or whatever and then you guys arrange to have a date and then you turn up and you get there and somebody from the office is there and you're like, oh, hey, uh, what are you doing here? And they're like, oh, just waiting for a date. And you're like, oh, yeah, me too. And then you both like, oh, shit, my date didn't show up. <laughs> but actually, it had matched both of you guys together right, and you right, didn't realize right. it. Again, it's not a, like some sort of fancy algorithm like that. It really is about how much you do and also how, I guess, um, willing you are to how, how low your bar is, right? Like, I don't want to go on a date with someone unless I'm like pretty secure. Some people like I remember going I remember going to even going to um Disney, mm, right? Went yeah. to Warner Brothers Universe in LA. And, and there's some saw, other YouTubers there. You saw Cinderella and you thought, she looks lovely. I'll and there were, a couple, there were there were one or two other YouTubers with us, and one of them at the time was on um Tinder, and he had a different date come to the hotel every night right. that we were there. So and he he's had like just, a little date with her in the hotel bar. He's just, and he was only there for a week. <clears throat> so he's just playing the volume game. He's just trying and that was out like a anyone. hookup thing. But it was it was a different way of playing the game. And I respect that. You know, I wasn't really comfortable with it myself. And I would never have done that. But, you know, that was a Wait, thing so that they was, were with you guys? This is a non yorks cast YouTuber. Right, right. But so they would bring a date and it would be with all you guys. You'd be hanging out well, with them together. Well, I wouldn't really hang out with him. I knew, knew of him. He was in the hotel. You know, we were all booked into the same hotel. Do you know what I mean? Right. right so, but, but we so, would see him in the hotel Oh, so you weren't bar. with him, like, in the we evening? Oh, okay. No, no. I, he's, not, he's not my friend. I don't know him. I've never met him. He's sure he's a lovely guy. I thought that you meant you guys were going out for dinner and every evening Lewis he would be with was, you and have a different girl. Lewis was just well, again, keeping track I would of really, all his I would respect that fucking chad play but again i would i would also be like oh I, I know to me that's a bit gross um a bit yep. it's, it's a bit gauche gauche a little a little beyond the pale it's a little a little gauche i got hey i gotta let's change the subject because i got something this is quite interesting i don't know if you heard about this this was is this, it the um, titanic sub no it's not i this heard is about something that. else you heard right, about sorry, that yeah. that's good a little. This is the the headline is this. This is on the verge. Sony's confidential PlayStation secrets just spilled because of a sharpie. 
Okay, so right. this is highly confidential information about its PlayStation business has just been revealed by mistake. As part of the FTC versus Microsoft hearing, Sony supplied a document from PlayStation chief Jim Ryan that includes redacted details on the margins Sony shares with publishers, its Call of Duty revenues, and even the cost of developing some of its games. This was all top secret. But all they did was go over the bits with a black Sharpie, and when you scan the image, you can still see behind the Sharpie. It's like the worst redacted stuff ever. Um, it's really, really interesting articles. Uh, for example, The Last of Us Part Two cost $220 million to make uh, and had 200 employees. Horizon Forbidden West, $212 million to make. But this was the bit that really got me. In 2021, over, they think, 14 million users by device spent 30% or more of their time playing Call of Duty. 6 million users spent 70% of their time on Call of Duty, and there were a million PlayStation users that only played Call of Duty. Just Call of Duty, that's the yeah, only game they played. It's a huge, uh, huge franchise. That's huge crazy. Game. There are some people who use Steam who only play Dota or whatever <laughs> as well. Like, it, it, that exists. Like, it definitely does. Yeah, I know. It's true. I mean, I'm yeah, yeah. obviously, as someone with 10, 11,000 hours in Dota, I, I understand the point I'm making. But I'm just saying that this is literally people buy this console just to play yeah. Call of Duty. And I was kind of surprised yeah, they, by that. Yeah, because they, will, they will do. You yeah. can also play it on PC. But so does this mean a lot of people who don't own a PCs, PC? PCs are expensive, though. Like, um, I mean, so is a PlayStation, but it's a lot cheaper than a than a full PC. If you want to play something, you know, at, at a good, decent like frame rate and all that kind of stuff, they're they're quite expensive, and they take up a lot of space too. PCs, I, you I have just, separate monitors a, and everything. Like, but uh, I, I can't imagine just having a console because you can't do. You could do no, no. But we're with we're it. we're in our forties. We have disposable income. We have houses and stuff like that. It's you know if right, you right, right. so hold on hold on. When I'm I was a teenager, the cost. it wasn't. It was it, like we had a computer, like a family computer, but like a gaming computer. We didn't. No, we didn't. no chance. We would. So we do would you think this is one. mostly kids? Um, I would say no. I would say it, it, it probably is like teenagers and. Lots of adults too. Like the, it's, it's lots of adults. Yeah. It's lots of it's lots of normal normal people. It'll be lots of lots of dads who have yeah, ten kids true. and no space for a computer and not a lot of time as well. Console and I think also it just it, hooks up to your it's TV. More, you're good it's to go. surprisingly more like um more more grown up grown up people with jobs as well who yeah like Sip said don't have the space or yeah. time just want or a anything, game when they yeah. come they home. They just play an hour of Call of Duty when they get home and and that's yeah. them done. That's it. Casuals, and, and, filthy casuals, and, uh, and not ju not gamers. just uh, <laughs> a, a bit of uh, Call of Duty, but they play with friends as well. Eh? Like, Ugh, disgusting. It is weird. Um, I've got a couple of weird things that I've got on the list here. The list. Um, the list. Yeah. Well, Sam sends us a list of interesting shit that's happening. Does he? Week. Right. Yeah. On the list, uh, was it forty-five minutes of talking about dating? Or well, no, it wasn't on the list. No. Uh, GTA Five mm. fan mod has modded in the jerry-rigged uh, Ocean Gate Expedition no! Titan Submersible. Oh my god! Of course it has. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's so bad. Uh, so yeah, uh, it adds a fully diveable <laughs> inverted commas. Well, that's better than that one. That looks exactly like it. The, he also, the same mod had previously made the timely Chinese spy balloon mod. <laughs> nice, yeah. Very good. Just add which some is, more immersion into your immersive gaming experience. That's funny. Which that is, is funny. very funny. Uh, a, 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 a Twitch streamer shaved their head for, for $2,500 only to have it refunded or whatever. Or like, you know, that's a classic thing you get a donation. Yeah, they refunded it. Yeah, refunds yeah it. That, that happens. But I'm sure he's doing all right. Um, God, what else? Uh, Give us yeah, any like, of them, anyone. Sure. The first one is someone threw their mom's ashes on stage at Pink's concert. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and Pink someone was also like, gave uh, her a wheel of brie. Apparently, like so a whole Pink, wheel. Pink of picks brie. it up and she's like, "Is this your mum?" <laughs> they're like, yeah. "Yeah." She's like, "I don't know how to what Feel to about think of this." Yeah, it's a weird That's one. what she yeah. said. And then there was yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's a bit. And weird, then. Yeah. Uh, on Monday, Airbnb listed a real-life Barbie Malibu dream house. Nice, nice. Hosted by a Ken. So uh, it's a, I think it's a viral marketing stunt for the upcoming it is, yeah. Barbie right. movie. They've been doing a lot of marketing stuff. But it's an expensive movie, apparently. It is, it's like 100-something million to make. All these movies are these days. I don't think it's possible to make No, a movie. but I mean, Barbie is not like... You wouldn't expect it to have like tons of 
visual effects or anything Think like all, that. I but the star power, I guess, effects. in itself You've got to is pay probably them a money. Big, yeah. You've got to pay. I mean, that, that, that's uh, that's Ryan Gosling and, and uh, uh, Margot, Margot Robbie, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're going to cost some money. You've got yeah. all the extras and all the rest of it. The sets, the costumes, and I guarantee you, there's a million fucking effects in this film. A million. Well, yeah. but they're looking at how much money, like things, like ever since the Lego movie, uh, you know, everyone has been doing this. You know, Z Zelda movie is now a thing because of Nintendo were like, the Mario movie has made so much money and been so successful that, you know, Zelda is the next biggest franchise, isn't it? This you is know, it. it I mean, we've bigger. had superheroes. Now it's going to be video games for the next 10 years. So I mean, video game movies have always been a movie. thing, just not probably right. to the scale that they're thinking of doing it now. But exactly. Do you remember The Wizard with Fred Savage? I don't remember The Wizard. It's uh, it, it was to showcase Super Mario Brothers 3. Fred Savage... Um, oh man, it was, it was good though. They, they so they go to a video game, co um, conference, not conference, competition in California, but they live like, I don't know, not in California. So they have to go on this big road trip, but Fred Savage's brother in the movie is, I think he's got autism or something, but mm. he's like really good at gaming, it turns out. And, uh, so they're taking him to this championship and they get to use the power glove to play Super Mario Brothers 3 for the first time. <laughs> Nobody had seen the game yet, so everybody wow. was like losing their minds. And it was, uh, I mean, it's like a very typical 80s movie. It was pretty good. Watched so, it as a kid. Was, there there it. have been a lot of video game movies. All yeah, right? yeah. I, I am aware of that. But here's my point. If you There's look been at a lot multiple of these movies, Super Mario Brothers movies. Been, there's a live there, action there's one. There's been two, right? Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. So there's the which is multiple. There've been a lot of Mortal Kombat movies. Yes. There have been Silent there's a Hill Street movies, Fighter movie. Resident Evil movies, Street Fighter movies, but a lot of these are dog shit. And right. they used to make superhero movies before Marvel took over and, and Disney and all the rest of it. And they were also dog shit. What I'm saying is that when you have a really well made, high budget movie like the Super Mario movie, yeah. and it does well. They're going to want to make more, and Nintendo yeah, has this huge are. back catalog. I mean, the, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I think, was looked kind of weird. I don't know if it was good. I can't remember. Man, I don't know what, if people liked it or not. But uh, all I'm saying is, I could well imagine that th this is a new thing where they're like, "Let's make a Zelda movie. Let's make a Mario Kart movie. Let's a make Metroid a movie. Super would work. Metroid movie. All yeah. of this shit, but with an Mega actual Man budget. Mega Man would be so good. Well, Resident Evil, they made movies, and I, yeah, I think some terrible. of them are they all bad? Yeah, they're terrible. All right. They're all terrible. I mean, they made a Max well, Payne movie. They made a Hitman movie. Like they, they try to make them, but as usual, they fuck it up. They look, they look like dog shit. I'm saying that there is definitely. I mean, imagine a Red Dead Redemption movie that was actually good. You could imagine I mean, people liking is, that. Red Dead Redem Redemption was kind of like a movie already, anyway, though. Yeah, I, but I, I wouldn't really I wouldn't stop them, but no, I know it wouldn't stop them, but like, I wouldn't feel like I would need to go see that because I think the game itself was. You know, like right? like a movie. Uh, no, I know? agree. It but I'm just saying, we that? had the Halo. Last of Us. We had the Last of Us TV the... series, which was well received. Yeah. We now we've had the Super Mario movie. This is it. This has piqued the interest of the big studios. And yeah, there's a Fallout Silent TV Hill, series coming out soon. Right. Exactly. So they're Fallout. like, oh, there's a whole world here with an audience thirsty for something like this. Let's make that. thirsty for Kirsty. It thirsty all comes for Kirsty. Thirsty for Kirsten. Yeah. Well, well, on this topic, interestingly. Um, Everyone, this is this is something that affects people on their dating sites. Everyone who's South Korean, um, Hungry for Lundgren, is suddenly going to get a year younger, right? Because the traditional way that they were calculate how old they were included time in the womb, right? So they were almost so when Korean babies were born, they were they were assumed to be a year old immediately. Really? Well, all right, okay. Um, yeah, that's a bit weird. Which is uh, yes, it's weird, but um. It's it's kind of a Korean age system. It apparently also sees people aging up on January the first instead of their actual birth date. Wow, very weird. Um, so wait, when did? Yeah, this is that, that's that's bizarre. That is yes, utterly bizarre. It is weird, um, but apparently they're fixing it to be in line with <laughs> the rest of the world. So a lot of people are going to get younger. younger one one year. Nice. Well, wait, if you were aged enough to drive or drink or whatever, suddenly you can't. That would suck. <laughs> oh God, uh, this is a good point. Um, that is, <laughs> that is a concern. They'd have um, to retroactively be like, don't worry, you're going down a year, but if we look at your year of birth, if it's, uh, if it's before a certain point, we'll count, you know, legally you'll count as if you were allowed to do those things. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, what if yeah. you had just got married and now your partner is technically underage? Are you going to prison? Yeah, no especially, yeah. There's uh, there's got to be some issues with all this, right? Well, who cares? Uh, it's, <laughs> who it's probably, cares? It's probably, it, they're pro it's probably again one of these things that's like not actually that much of a problem these days. Um, or maybe it is. I watched this like I don't know. I've not been very well this week. I've been watching a lot of crap on Netflix. I watched this um, King of Clones documentary about this guy who was the South Korean um, uh, cloning cloning man, expert <laughs> biologist, and he was like not really ethically harvesting women's eggs for his like Jesus stem cell experiments. Um, I've got to say, you, whenever they use the term harvesting, yeah, it, it always makes me think of the Matrix or something like that. Harvesting eggs. Just, yeah, yeah. It just seems so grisly. I don't know why. Well, I, I thought I always thought that women only had a certain amount of eggs. Um, they they do, in, don't they? Yeah. Well, maybe it's like I don't know. Maybe it's only produced for a certain amount of time. No, I, I, I think they know. have their eggs at the start. A, l a lot of women are going to email and tell me I'm wrong, so I'm going to look this up. Oh, yeah. Women. This born is what I always with heard. Their eggs. <laughs> <laughs> their eggs. <laughs> <laughs> A female baby is born with all the eggs that she will ever have. Yeah. This wow. is so estimated to be to... around 2 million. Oh, that's a lot of kids. But by the time that a girl a reaches puberty, eggs. that number's decreased to 400,000. I guess they just perish. From puberty to the menopause, only about 300 to 400 eggs will be released through ovulation. There you go. So you start right, off okay. with way more eggs than you need. Harvest them from the infants. There you go. You right. get one baby, you've got 400,000 eggs, job done. Right. They might be quite small, though. Um, no, I don't, well, I don't small know. eggs. Yeah, it's funny when we talk How about women in terms them? of eggs. Makes them sound like chickens. You want some extra why. large <laughs> eggs, like uh, like you're at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, like I ostrich. want them extra large. Well, I want them free range. And I know um, that. Yeah, if you want to get your eggs from a woman, you've got to put her in the. It's got to be the right hutch. And you've got to my, keep her nice and warm yeah, and keep my a woman, large cock around. <laughs> my egg provider needs to be needs to be free range. <laughs> Can't well, overemphasize think, like, that enough. Dehumanizing here. This is the, the one thing that stuck with me from the documentary was that there was this fucking camel, right? Called um, camel, a, a camel. Right. So obviously, what happened was this guy was disgraced, right? This South Korean guy was was who's doing all cloning and stuff was disgraced, and he kind of got employed by some high-ranking member of the UAE because they wanted to breed these racing camels. And ten years ago, they had this legendary camel called. Mabrakan or something. He was like this huge, um, like like gigantic camel. Like, it was like, kind of like a freak of nature. And they wanted when he died, they cut his balls off and put them in a freezer or whatever. <laughs> so they had, you know, you think they'll do DNA that to Shaq when he passes away? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so this camel, um, they be they be kept it on ice, and they brought this guy in who clones people's pets, kind of just because he's mental. Um, and they got him to clone this this gigantic camel, and he cloned it a bunch of times. And uh, it's fascinating because they also had a guy from Australia who was like the camel breeder. And I was like, what the heck, heck is that? And apparently in Australia they have this. Um, the, apparently from the north to like back in the day, the only way to get to the centre of Australia from the north was via camel routes, mm. bizarrely. And so they have this kind of camel heritage um, and a lot of people who know a lot about camels there. And so they had this like ragtag team of like South Korean disgraced genetic scientist guy, <laughs> ca Australian camel breeder. Which, I mean, like, I, I love this stuff where it's like, you know, in, in the UAE, with, uh, out in the desert where they built this high tech lab, you know, and they're like... We don't, we don't call them camels down here. We call them Kalunga Bunga Wungas, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know, like that just really, really got me like this week. I don't know why it stuck with me. Nothing else I watched. That's interesting. Did, right. I've been watching the American Gladiators documentary, oh, uh, which is well worth a watch. It's really funny, um, and it, it's done in that very sort of modern style with lots of animation and lots of uh, talking heads and stuff. But uh, I, I remember Gladiators. Um, we didn't call it British Gladiators. We just called it Gladiators. Theirs was American Gladiators. And it was incredibly dangerous in the first couple of seasons. They had no idea how to be safe. The contestants were getting fucking destroyed. All the, the gladiators were getting terrible injuries and having to retire. It's, it's really something. Um, really? Yeah. And then, of course, it all falls apart. But it, it, it feels like nowadays this kind of shit would just never fucking happen in a million years. That these guys just throw together this terrible TV show. People are getting badly injured and it just it gets picked up. And it, it's just so... 
see of the pants production. Um, I think it, it's it's really interesting to see. And that's, this was only the the eighty nine is when it started. Just go 89. back and look and imagine that being made today. Yeah, eighty nine to ninety six. I think it ran. Jesus. But you oh, wouldn't. Man, you, a... you could easily have missed season one. Like it was like <clears throat> it was still still getting there. You know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they were all getting injured and stuff, and like, oh, terribly. The, but I guess it was like very early, like late eighties. That kind of that kind of lazy attitude towards safety as yeah. well, right? But also the games looked terrible, and it was all so low budget, and they just had to get them made to show, like the pilot, for example. Everything looks awful. The costumes are awful. The set is terrible, and all these things they just couldn't figure out. And then they bring in this director who knows what he's doing. He's like a real weirdo. Anyway, it, it's really good. Give it a watch. I recommend it. Nice. I'll, yeah, oh, I'll check that out. I've been watching yeah, uh, I- Race Across the World <laughs> on uh, oh, for on iPlayer. <laughs> they go across Canada, so I wanted to see if there was like anywhere that they went that I recognized. We talked about Banff last week. They went to Banff. Um, oh, it's, right. it's, it's all right. It's I I like. Uh, I like crappy TV shows. I watch a lot of them. So, oh, so how about watch this? There's this uh, this new Perry Mason show. Um, it's like a remake of a Perry reboot, Mason, yeah. but it's set in the 30s. So it's like him before he became the Perry Mason that we Who know as a lawyer. Who the fuck is Perry Mason? He was, so it, this is my thing. It's he's like, like a detective, they, right? Why did they call this Perry Mason? He's like a Matlock appealing... type figure. Yeah, he's like, but he's like a lawyer. Perry Mason's a lawyer. Oh yeah, he's a lawyer. Oh. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So he goes into court and he does trials and he's like, I think Perry Mason was like, he wasn't in a wheelchair, that was Ironside. But Perry Mason was like a fusty old sort of lawyer. Um, and this was a TV show, I, I think, in the 70s. I, it might have been in the 60s, in the yes. 60s I don't know. Yeah. But it was like, um, he was a lawyer. It was like a court drama. And so this is the the origin story of Perry Mason. And he was like a very grizzled World War One veteran who was kind of like a shady 30s PI. It's kind of noirish. It's kind of weird the way it's shot. And it's just, it's just odd. But it's got John Lithgow in his fantastic. I love John Lithgow. I think he's one of the most underused actors. Um, and it's got everyone in it is really good. Remember it's got that some... famous line of his from Dexter when he was the Trin- Trinity killer and he's sitting down for dinner with his family and uh, his wife is like talking and he turns around and he's Shut up, cunt. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, what a moment. What I don't, a I don't, moment. I never watched it, but I can imagine him saying that. Oh, oh, I'm going to look that up. Look right it now. up. Trinity Killer sitting down for dinner with his family. It's John Lithgow. Right. Right. Well, that's a, oh, I think it's a perfect place to end. Shut up, really, cunt. That. Yeah, yeah. It's- uh, all right. Well, we'll end here. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And, uh, and enjoy yourselves. Have a good week. Yes. Be good to each Have other. Have a good one. Right. And stay frosty. We love you. See you next Au time. Au revoir, mes amis. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.